The Board of Elders of Gateway Church say they have accepted the resignation of senior pastor Robert Morris. It's been um, pretty devastating. Or how on earth could anyone let him be on in leadership when they knew what he did to me? My rebellion took a form uh, of immorality uh, that I don't like to talk about much. Uh, I, I was very sexually immoral. <laughs> Megachurch founder and pastor Robert Morris has admitted to moral failings following accusations of sexual abuse of a child published online this past Friday. Our Andrea Lucia reports the church leaders say they were aware of what happened. So God heals, God redeems. Based in Southlake, Gateway Church is one of the country's largest megachurches. So you can't redeem yourself. With about 100,000 people attending every weekend and nine locations spread throughout North Texas. Founder and senior pastor Robert Morris reaches even larger audiences in a weekly program posted online and broadcast in more than 190 countries. It's been um, pretty devastating. For Cindy Clemeshire, seeing his influence grow has been difficult. Or how on earth could anyone let him be on in leadership when they knew what he did to me? She was 12 years old when she says Morris began molesting her. He and his wife were friends of her parents who would often stay over. And the abuse, she says, continued for four and a half years. He said, you can never tell anyone because it will ruin everything. In a statement from the church this weekend, Morris admits to what he describes as inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady for several years in his 20s. A young lady? I'm not, I was not a young lady. I was a little girl. I was 12. The admission came after a blog called The Wartburg Watch shared Clemeshire's story. Morris himself describes kissing and petting, not intercourse. Under current law, that's still behavior that could qualify as continuous sexual abuse of a young child, a crime punishable by life in prison. Clemeshire says she eventually told her father, who demanded Morris step down from his position at a church that's now Gateway's Grand Prairie campus. Morris says for two years he did step down to receive counseling and ministry before returning in 1989 with the full blessing of the elders. Decades later, Clemeshire says it's a relief her story is finally out. Oh, I definitely think the consequences are probably starting. <laughs> I mean, people know the truth. I know that um, there's got to be consequences. Name of the message last week? Rejection Roots. We talked about rejection and how rejection formed me in my early days and could keep us away from Christ and this weak rebellious roots. Um, my rebellion took a form uh, of immorality uh, that I don't like to talk about much. Uh, I, I was very sexually immoral uh, as a teenager. And it started early in my life and it, became, it was very easy for me. Now, I'm going to share something with you that um, I've really had to struggle with sharing the details, things that I want, I'm going to be sharing with you today. But um, when I say it was easy for me, uh, I, 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 I was very immoral and I was immoral a lot. And I can remember a conversation with my friends uh, and they, they said, the one of them said, uh, you're just blessed. That's what they said. Because we would go out and meet girls, and I would end up being immoral uh, just, from a one, just in one night. And, and so they began actually, it's so, it's so horrible to share this because of what the word blessed means to me now. And that I've written a book called The Blessed Life, and it's about giving, not taking. And it's about giving to give, not giving to get. So it's the total opposite of the way I was before I met Christ. Here's what I've realized. I was not blessed. I was cursed. There was a, a curse on my life where immorality came easy for me. In other words, there was a bent toward that. I'm going to show you that the Lord showed me what the root of that curse was. The reason I'm going to show you is because I think there's, if there's a bent toward your life in a cert, toward a certain sin, 
maybe God could show you the root and you could cut the root off and not have that fruit anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I learned to lie and manipulate uh, because I also had rejection. Uh, I didn't want to be rejected. So I looked for the girls that would be the most susceptible. And I learned how to spot this in girls. Please hear me. There's a reason I'm I'm sharing this. Uh, The very thing, ladies, that the world tells you to give a man before marriage so that you can keep him is the very thing that will cause you to lose him. Uh, I looked for girls that did not have a good relationship with their father. I learned to spot that. I looked for girls that were insecure. And uh, I don't know, now I look back on this, I can tell I did it. It wasn't like a plan that I had, but I could, I could spot this. Uh, girls were made to be held by men. And if they are not held, if that need is not met in a healthy way by their father, they will meet it in an unhealthy way. But you need to understand that if a man does not respect you, he cannot love you. He cannot love you. As a matter of fact, fulfilled lust turns to hate. And I, I wish I had time to show you the whole passage. Second Samuel 13 talks about Amnon and Tamar, and that Amnon really loved her. He loved her, and that Tamar loved him. Uh, but Amnon forces her and uh, rapes her. And then I want to just show you one, one verse. Really, I'd love for you to read the whole chapter later. Verse, seven, verse 15 says, then Amnon, this is right after uh, it happens, then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said, arise and be gone. And she said, no, please don't send me away. And he actually calls a servant and says, throw this woman out and bolt the door behind her. Um, there is... God meant for us to express love in a healthy way. Because of the lust that was in my life, I, it, it has taken years for me to get over the images and the things that I saw that no person should have ever seen. And the appetites that were created in me that God never intended to be created in me. Please understand that when God says don't, there's a reason. And I'll just give you one quick so that you, hopefully you'll understand this. Uh, in order to have premarital sex, you have to sneak around to do it. And you have to lie and you have to be deceptive and you have to be manipulative. You, you have, for instance, let me just take a teenage couple. When the teenager's about to go out and the parents say, where y'all going tonight? They don't say, we're going to have sex. <laughs> so they have to lie. And then when they come back, where'd you, where'd you go? What'd you do? They have to lie. So you learn to lie, you learn to be deceptive. And you get this um, feeling in you of adrenaline, adrenaline rush, because you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. But once you get married, you don't have to sneak around anymore. But you've developed an appetite for sneaking around sex, that sex in marriage can never satisfy that appetite because you don't have to sneak around. And this is why a man will begin to talk to someone at the office and begin to flirt, and he is satisfying, and I'm going to say this in a very strong way, but he's satisfying an appetite that you created in him. And I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm trying to get you to understand how important it is not to create an appetite in someone before your marriage. Don't stir up love before it's time, Song of Solomon says. And what will happen is this, this man will begin to have an affair, and now he's sneaking around. And he's beginning, he'll, he'll begin to feel like with her, like he felt with you before you got married. And he associates that feeling with love. So he'll begin to think that he loves her and not you. So he divorces you, marries her, and guess what? He doesn't have to sneak around anymore. This is why many men will say, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. And then they will bring things into their sex life that God didn't intend to try to spice it up, quote unquote, and it's not the same. Because you create an appetite. I'm, 
I'm telling you that my wife and I, we had to deal with things that we should not have had to deal with because of my sin. And I asked the Lord after I got uh, saved, God, what, what was the root? Why? You know, they said I was blessed. I know I wasn't blessed. I was cursed. Multiple, multiple affairs. And I don't understand this, God. And so what was the root? What was the open door in my life? And I want to show you a scripture I showed you a few weeks ago, but it's going to kind of shock you when, when you see this. Hebrews 12, verses 15 and 16 says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. This word means morally defiled. Many, this is my life, what you're reading this verse is my life. Many became morally defiled. Now watch the very next verse, but it's the same sentence. And I just want to take the first five words. Lest there be any fornicator. It goes on, or profane person among you. Okay, lest there be a fornicator. Don't let a root of bitterness spring up, or many will be morally defiled because there will be a fornicator among you. I was the fornicator. Life was because there was a root of bitterness in our family. And when I share with you what happened that I've never shared publicly, and I got my mother's permission to share this this week, you'll understand why uh, there was bitterness in our family. The Board of Elders of Gateway Church say they have accepted the resignation of senior pastor Robert Morris. This comes after a woman alleged she was sexually abused by Morris when she was a child in the 1980s. Cindy Clemishire says the abuse started when she was 12 and it continued until she was 16. On Sunday, Morris admitted he was, quote, involved in an inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady, though he did not mention the girl's age. He went on to say that when the abuse was brought to light, he stepped away away from ministry and entered counseling for two years before returning to the pulpit. Morris has not been criminally charged. The Board of Elders says prior to Clemishire coming forward, they did not have all the facts of the inappropriate relationship, including her age and the length of the alleged abuse. They released a statement saying, quote, we are heartbroken and appalled by what has come to light over the past few days, and we express, express our deep sympathy to the victim and her family. Gateway Church has more than 100,000 members. We are gathering more reaction and we'll have an update. <laughs>